So welcome to my class. In the last class, we talked about the construction of frequency array. In this, we are going to talk about before the construction. I'm not going to do the construction of frequency array in this class. It'll be in the next class. But what we have to gather or what we should understand before constructing the frequency distribution. Okay, or the class interval series, it's also known as the continuous series. So just have a look. So here we go. That now in a continuous series, data are presented according to class intervals. And before I go on, let me just again tell, uh, just make a note of this, that in the previous series, in the discrete series, the identity of all the values remains. Like for example, when we saw 11, in the last class, when we talked about 11 marks, we know that two students have got 11 marks. 12 marks, three students have got uh, uh, 12 marks and all of that. But in this, what we see is, in the, pre, uh, in the frequency distribution or continuous series, we notice that uh, the identity of the various values is lost. That is, the individual values of the variables are not found out or they are not used in this classification because they are grouped. The data is grouped. So we, we don't know, we know that within this range so many are there. That is the only difference. Okay. So let's just take, so the main difference between the frequency array and frequency distribution is that in the case of the former, the variable is discrete and here the variable is continuous. That means here the variables are grouped and here there they are singly put, the variables. In case of frequency array, each item in the series is numbered, while in the case of frequency distribution, items are not measured exactly, rather are placed within the range or limits. And this is what is known as a class. So what is a class? We, when we are doing this, we, we are going to talk about class. Now what is a class? It means a group of numbers in which items are placed, such as let's take 0 to 10, 10 to 20, etc. Now we are going to talk about class limits. Each class is bounded by a class limit. There are two limits of each class. These are the lower limit and the upper limit. The lowest value of a class is its lower limit and the highest value is termed as the upper limit. For example, just let's take 0 to 10. What do you find? 0 is the lower limit and 10 is the upper limit. So there, this is the boundary of the class. They are no, the boundaries of the class are called the class limit. So somebody could have got a 0, somebody could have got a 10. So within that, how many students have got marks between 0 to 10 will be in this. So grouped into this particular uh, what do you call class which are within the within this class limits then we talk about class interval now what is a class interval the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit of a class is known as a class interval now for example in this if we've taken the class interval 0 to 10 so what do we do 10 that is the upper limit minus the lower limit. You get what is the difference is 10. So that is a class interval. Now talking about that, we, we come to what is known as mid value. So what is a mid value? Now mid value of the class interval is, you could say it's an average. You take the upper limit, the lower limit and divide it by 2 and that's what you get a midpoint. Uh, so the mid value of the class interval of a class is also called a midpoint. It lies halfway between the lower limit and the upper limit of a class and it can be obtained by dividing the sum of the lower limit and the upper limit of the class by 2. So these two numbers you take, the upper limit and the lower limit and you divide it by 2 and that's the average that you get or that's the midpoint. That's a midpoint of the class mark. Okay, so so 0 plus 10 divided by 2, that is 10 divided by 2, the 5, so 5 is the midpoint. 
okay that's a mid value now what is a frequency which is very important so we've divided into the class intervals because in order to see the number of items or value which are included in this particular class so that is known as a frequency of the class for example if we have okay if suppose 0 to 10 just look at this suppose 0 to 10 class uh, 0 to 10 is it 0 to 10 ha huh, 0 to 10 so 0 to 10 marks have been obtained by five students so we just put it down there so again let me just tell you one more thing that you have to make a note that uh, here what we do is that each class is used to represent a class so we really don't know who, how many exactly have got how much like in the discrete series as we saw that the identity of the various values is not lost but here we don't know who, how who, who got a zero who got say one who got, who got three who got ten so that's what that is grouped uh, that's a group data that we're going to talk about so okay then we'll meet for the next class and you can you can just get a question as what do you mean by a class short answer question what is a class limit how do you calculate mid values and all of that